Hi and welcome to Financial Zula, where we give you information, insight and tips on just about any financial topic in and around Namibia. In today's video, we will be covering frequently asked questions for Namibian techs and what they're really asking and give really, you know, real life example answers. So stay tuned if you're interested in watching this content and please remember that the information in this video does not constitute financial advice or tax advice. And if you're looking for financial or tax advice, please speak to a certified financial or tax advisor. Let's answer your questions. some frequently asked questions for Namibian Techs. So these frequently asked questions are associated with the NAMRA page and this is actually questions that people have asked on, NAM, on the NAMRA page and are constantly wanting to find out information about the, the questions that they're asking. So this is, this is, these are those questions, just answering basic short questions, uh, fairly simple but always a great idea to break them down and explain them to everybody because text can get very complicated very quickly. So the first question is what is payee? Uh, payee stands for pay as you earn. It's that little amount that you see on your pay slip and you keep asking yourself where is this money going and like what is it doing and when will I get it back because they just keep taking it from you you know. So that pay as you earn is actually your tax that you're paying for income that you're earning. So if you think about it, your employer usually gives you like an annual salary. This is how much you're going to earn. And then NAMRA says if a person is earning anything above 50,000 Namibian dollars in a year, they want you to pay tax on that. So your employer already knows that you're going to earn this much and which tax bracket you fall into and how much tax you're expected to pay. So what they do is then because you are not being paid that amount on an annual basis they don't give you your salary at the end of the year they give you as you earn it so once you work for a month then they give you a salary for the month that you've worked and then because at the end of the day they know that you have to pay your tax or NAMRA will hold the employer accountable or they'll follow your employer if you don't pay your tax they need to take that tax from you and pay it over to NAMRA as you earn your income so pay as you earn okay so what happens is you can't really pay your tax at the end of the year because now if you think about it if you earn 100,000 and you have to pay if you have to pay like 20,000 on that you're not going to pay 20,000 at the end of your tax year which is in February you're not going to pay that 20,000 in February so it's better for them to just take small amounts during the year and then they pay to NAMRA and then at the end of the year it accumulates to 20,000 so that's pay as you earn and no you are not getting that money back <laughs> you are paying your taxes yeah and now you understand why people complain oh it's our taxpayer money yes it's that money that they take from your account so the second frequently asked question that we are addressing today is what is gross income so yeah uh there's a whole word okay let me blow your mind gross income is the total amount in cash or otherwise uh received by or accrued to a in favor of a person in any tax year that's not of a capital nature mind blown <laughs> okay let me break it down to you so yeah what they're actually saying in this gross income is any amount that you have received right or accrued so it doesn't have to be money that is physically in your bank account there's an agreement that shows that you're going to receive this money then it's going to be assumed that this money is accrued to you and you're going to be taxed on it or it's going to constitute part of your gross income um yes so it's received by or accrued to in favor of you so yeah it needs to belong to you and it's in any tax tax year yeah so it's in any tax year so anywhere between for an individual 1 march and 28 february if you receive money there or somebody owes you money there then yeah it's part of your gross income and another thing is part of the definition is in cash or otherwise so what this means is it has a monetary value to it right if you guys are exchanging cows it's gross income because there's a monetary value to the cow okay so that also forms part of your gross income and then the last part that speaks about not of a capital nature is just trying to say that 
if you trade if you sell okay i'm going to use an example of cell phones if you sell cell phones to make a living right then that is revenue in nature because you're actually making a constant income to get money right but if you as an individual don't sell phones and then you have like one phone and you're like i'm gonna sell my phone just so that you can get rid of it and whatever the intention is not really to make a lot of money then that would be capital nature so if it's capital nature then it won't constitute or it won't form part of gross income but if you do it for a living you trade you it's your trade it's something that you do on a constant basis then that's gross income or it's it's not capital in nature yeah i hope i broke it down fairly okay the next frequently asked question is what is that okay that stands for value added tax so basically you are getting taxed for value added to the product that you are consuming right it's a consumer tax it's usually if you look at your receipt you will see there's always that little thing that says that on it so that's what you paid for the goods that you have you are consuming because the value has been added to them if i can just put it that way let's take fish for example so one company uh, catches fish in the ocean right so they've caught fish and then the value is just catching fish and then another maybe even the same company washes the fish right so they've added value to the fish by cleaning them and then that value needs to be taxed that value that they've added because you know it costs money to clean the fish and whatever and then there's taxes on that and then another company maybe processes the fish by taking out the the intestines and all that stuff and cleaning them up and stuff further so that it's more consumable they've added more value and there's tax on that value that they've added and then maybe another company cans the fish and you know uh, transports it there's value in every one of these processes and at the end of the day they need to just the fish comes to you in a way that you can just eat it right so you pay for all the value that was added to the the fish coming to you in a can and you just buy it from the shop so that's really what that is um there are a few other things about that that are that can get a bit it's not really complex but there's a few more details that can be added to that like there's some things that are zero rated meaning the vet on it is zero percent there's stuff that are exempt from from vet that means there's no vet on them at all and then there's a standard rate vet vegetable supplies which is then the ones that apply the standard rate of currently namibia to 15 percent so that's yeah that's the consumer tax that you pay that's that okay the next frequently asked question is what is a taxpayer representative okay a taxpayer representative also in the in the word this is a person that represents a taxpayer okay that's not the answer you're looking for but anyway a taxpayer representative is a person that completes taxes on behalf of another person so for companies for example you know the company can't <laughs> can't complete their taxes on their own so um namra requires that every company appoints a specific person to represent the company in the taxes so they complete the tax returns and then you know they submit them and then they they make sure that the company complies with namra's um rules okay and then what happens is also that a taxpayer representative is also someone that can give tax advice okay so a taxpayer representative doesn't only have to be for a company it can also be for an individual this is a person that can there's people that do this for a living by the way they actually just complete your tax returns on your behalf they just ask for information and they do everything for you um people that also give tax advice for a living um this is not the tax advice i'm talking about i'm talking about the certified tax advisors and yeah, so it's just somebody that can give give you tax advice and complete your tax returns on your behalf or on behalf of your company. The final frequently asked question is actually a bonus just for you. So I'm about to get you more money <laughs> or allow you to pay less tax. Okay, so the final one is actually a housing allowance. Slow down. It's not just if you own a house, it's also if you rent. But what it is is actually a benefit on for people that receive a housing allowance so if you check your pay slip and there's housing allowance somewhere there then yeah this one is for you 
plus it's also an opportunity for you to go check your payslip so go check your payslip right now go check all right is the housing allowance on there there is okay so what the benefit is is that your taxable amount reduces let me break it down for you sounds a little bit complicated but it's actually not so what happens is let me give an example so you receive a housing allowance of twelve thousand, for example right and then you are renting a flat for nine thousand okay so i'm just I'm, I'm being very ambitious here but let's just say you receive twelve thousand housing allowance and the flat that you are renting is nine thousand all right so what happens is a third of the nine thousand which is three thousand is then taken out of the housing allowance and then only what's remaining after the third is taken out is becomes your taxable amount so in number terms if your housing allowance is twelve thousand and your rental is nine thousand so you take that nine thousand you divide it by three which gives you three thousand so then from the twelve thousand you take out three thousand and then what's remaining is nine thousand and your taxable income will only be for the housing allowance portion will only then be that nine thousand so the three thousand you don't get taxed on so yeah that's how the benefit works it's an interesting benefit but how do you get it right like how are you gonna get it like now you know that there's this nice benefit that exists how you get it is first you need your rental agreement from your landlord whatever so you get your rental agreement and then signed and with all the details a real contract right and then you take that to your employer finance department whoever deals with your salaries you take that there and then they will do the working for you and you should start being able to see it on your payslip and yeah that just means less it doesn't you're not gonna get more money it just reduces the amount of tax that you're gonna pay by a little small margin but i'm sure it's something for a lot of people so you are welcome hi financial zula viewers thank you so much for joining us in this video i hope that this video was worth your time just answering frequently asked questions for namibian techs so if you are returning viewer welcome back if you are new welcome and thank you for joining us please like subscribe and share this video and thank you for watching we'll see you